Hey everybody, hope you enjoy this video. Give us a thumbs up. Welcome to Larson Farms. Morning. Don't forget to subscribe and give a thumbs up to this video as I plan on putting the unload auger clutches on this combine today. It's that was loud. Yeah, so the clutches go on right there and right there so that the tank augers don't spin when you want them not to spin. That allows you to clean out your unload auger with the grain tank still having grain in it and not hurting or prematurely wearing out any components of the unload auger system. We had it on both of our 9870s. We traded the one. That kit don't fit an S790. So we had to buy a new kit, which supposedly has a bunch of updates. So hopefully that is a good thing. This combine still has it on there, which is good. So this is what it looks like. Just little clutches on there to disengage the tank augers. So I get to put that on, run the wires, run the wire to the cab for the foot switch because it's a foot switch, you keep your load auger on and you step on the foot switch, that allows them to shut off and your auger to keep going. There is a couple of steps to the process that make me a bit nervous and that is when you have to drill into the shaft up to that blue line there. It is a Lancota product. I see they made this rubber piece that I'll show you later uh, in there that holds the clutches together. I think that's a good design in case there's any wobble in them. I'm gonna try and maneuver this thing in there. See now I can just stand in here. So I gotta take this chain off, sprockets off, we'll start there. Let there be light. That's pretty nice. Okay, now this here little jeb thing has to go on here with the keyway in. Then I have to drill into this up to that blue line. Now that we got the holes drilled, we can tap that out so it has threads in the holes for the next piece that goes on. There you go, nothing to it. They send most of the stuff in the kit, this thread tap, the drill bit, the whatever you call this thing. So it's pretty pretty simple so here is what the clutch itself looks like so there it basically is what I drilled a hole through that goes on the shaft and then that allows the sprocket to keep turning but the shaft and auger to not turn and then when it engages it all turns as one when you want it to actually unload so now I gotta put the sprocket on like this. And then uh, install it, I think. Nobody else is here and the phone's ringing. Ben Johnson. Oh, Ben Johnson. I missed your phone call. To the office, it's only three rings and I can't run that fast. Yeah, we got alarms out here to let us know in the shop when the phones are ringing. 
line one and line two. So now you basically slide them on the shaft, make sure they're in line with all of these. If they're not in line with the other pulleys that are originally made for the combine, you have to shim them out or in. In this case, if you can see that, this needs to go out. So I gotta pull it back out, put a couple washers in there on the end of the shaft to pull this out along with this one also because it's not in line at all. So now what I've done is I took a level and I went across this, right here's the level, crossed it like that whether that's right or wrong and then I've determined that the front one needs two washers put in there and the rear one needs these three washers put on the end like that or inside of here same thing as it slid on to hold it away so that it runs in line with this one and this one this one appears like it's free floating I don't know if that's right or wrong, but it's the way it was, so it's the way it's going to be. Now i got to put some Never Seize on here, says the book. And then Never Seize these together so they stay in there decent. Slide it all together. So right now I'm using Never Seize to hold my washers together so that everything don't fall apart. I'm trying to assemble, and I'm going to put it in the clutch. That's pretty good. So now I'm going to put these bolts into the holes I drilled earlier, putting a bit of Loctite on. That was plenty. Oh my. Just like that, they're installed. And because it's funner to do everything twice, I forgot to put the chain on. So I just deassemble. Now I'm going to reassemble. So now that we got this all installed, that's the way that looks. Chain's back on, everything's tight. And, uh,. Now we get to run some wires to the cab from the battery on the other side of the combine up to the clutches. Also have to splice in so that it knows when you push the um, button on the joystick to turn the unload auger on. So now i got to locate the battery box. Battery box ain't in the same place that it's always been. That's strange. Oh, oh I think I found it. Yep, this looks like the battery box. It's on the left side now. I gotta show you what I just found. We were pretty close to having uh Why did the combine just shut off? This here terminal here is finger tight. Look at that. Yeah, I'm gonna have to tighten that up. Hey, don't do that! <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That'd be my uncle's son, so my cousin. I think he's gonna wash a truck today. I think. Oh my goodness, we could have had a big wreck. He apparently don't have school today, so he's gonna learn what farming is like. Sure looks like a beautiful day outside. One thing that we wish we would have done with the shop is that door that's open there should have been three semis wide, because that's where we park semis, and it would really be nice to get all three in there for melting off, and it'd be really nice for power washing to have a little more width in there. Right now that's 32 feet wide. I wish it was maybe 42 or 50 feet wide. But $7 corn turned to $3 corn and this is what we got and it's a blessing to have. Wash time. So there's the foot switch that I need to get screwed to the ground. But you push down and hold it down until the unload auger is empty. Then you turn your unload auger off and then you can depress the pedal. But I've got everything installed. 
now it's to test fire it which I might need to go outside but I'm gonna try the key just to hear if they're clicking or not this thing's smarter than the 70 series it won't engage when it's off apparently but that little light should light up there and it does not there it is all installed wired up right here instead of in the battery box I like this better so we're gonna take it outside we're gonna unhook the head and uh, test the augers better fold that in make sure it don't hit nothing I always have a lot of people ask me on Instagram why we unfold our unload augers when we're parked in the shop I don't see why that's such an amazing or weird thing to do but we do it because uh, the unload augers are so long that you can't park stuff tight in here if you don't unfold them and drive stuff underneath them that's why so dad's gonna pull the head trailer up here we're gonna unhook it he should raise it so that the jack doesn't drag like it's doing raise it up yeah what the heck just drag it So I'm going to turn the unload auger on, and since you can't see what's happening, there the unload auger just turned on, and you can't really see through the window, but right there it just turned the tank augers on. Now when I step on the foot pedal, they are stopping, they're slowing down, and they just stopped. So that's how they work. Now I can let off of this and they'll turn back on. Now the tank augers are running again, so that allows that unload auger to shut off. When you turn that unload auger off, it turns everything off all at once, if you don't have your foot on that pedal. So it seems like they're all working the way they're supposed to. Hopefully they work next fall, when we're ready to use it. guys are gonna say case comes with that wow. unload auger tank button built right in. Really? Yeah. Look at trade then. I'm not running red. No I don't think I will neither. Imagine oh, running, well, I'll demo one. Can you imagine running the case auto steer? No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe what? it's better than the quad track stuff though. I doubt okay it. where's the next field? Yeah, let's go custom combine or something. I'm folding her back. What was that? I don't know. I think the left tire broke off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Then we can put tracks on. I idled the machine down. We idled it down now. Okay, you ready? I hope you I got have. all your belts on well, now. I hope so. Fire yeah. it up. It's not the right answer, but fire it up. We'll you're know. You're buying whatever you wreck. We'll know what happens here shortly. Oh, sounds like it's working. I think we're good. We got to get home for yeah. New Year's Eve. Prepare. Did you buy beer? What do you want beer for? I got something in my Christmas stocking. Fireball shot? Red ball. Fireball? Red ball. It's all about moderation and knowing your throttle. What's that noise? Yeah, you almost ripped that jack off no, that trailer. It was, it was it really dragging. The ice just it was fine. really dragging. Let me go. Time to park it away. All systems are a go. Boy, I wish we were putting them on, but we're not. Warming her up for an oil change. The case wrench on a deer is bad luck. Hey, and remind me that there's oil draining out of the bottom of this thing. 
and not to overflow the bucket. Oh good, we're only half full. That is so warm. It's a green filter because it's brand new. That's interesting. So this is the first oil change on it. I'm gonna fill it up with uh, Schaefer's 1540. About 100 hours on the engine oil. So. That's one thing I don't like about Schaefer's oil. It looks black when you put it in. A little bit over full. But that'll be okay because when it starts, a little gallon will go into there. Hey everyone, thanks for watching us here at Larson Farms. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up because that'd be awesome and I'd appreciate that.